I want to wish all of you joining us from around the world a very good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. And thank you. Thank you so much for giving us an hour of your time today. And thank you for joining us today for this overview webinar for the Wharton School's upcoming online program, Technology Acceleration Program, Make Disruptive Technology Your Advantage. We're so thrilled to have all of you here with us today. I would love to have you all say hello uh, to our amazing program leader who is on the line with us today, Amokar Chavaria, our amazing program leader and the CEO of the FinTech School, uh, and not just the program leader for this cohort, but also has been here from the beginning, building this course, updating this course. There is no one better uh, to be here talking about this program today. So good morning, Amokar. Thank you so much for being here today. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Mark. Uh, great pleasure to be here. Uh, I happen to be a, a Wharton alum, so it's always a, 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 you know, exciting for me to get one of these cohorts off the ground. Very much looking forward to sharing experiences with you, uh, understanding sort of your corporate innovation agenda. And by way of background, uh, I will tell you a little bit further, you know, as, as Mark continues, I'll tell you a little bit more about my background in the next few slides. But um, yeah, I've been with this program since the very first cohort. I helped to design part of the uh, program as well. And uh, yeah, we've been having uh, very good sessions and a lot of good outcomes from the prior runs. So very much looking forward to this one as well. Thank you, Mark. So first and foremost, who should attend? Well, first of all, if you are on this call with us today, if you're on this Zoom, then we feel pretty confident that you should attend, that this program is built for you. But this program specifically offers a comprehensive approach to the challenges that every organization must consider when adapting to and adopting disruptive new processes and technologies such as AI and ML. So if your industry or your organization, uh, if artificial intelligence and machine learning is coming up as a topic of conversation at all, then this program is built for you. But it is particularly relevant for the roles listed below. So if this sounds like you, then you are in the right place. If you are a mid to senior level tech manager and you're seeking to build a technology roadmap based on emerging technologies and gain an understanding of the future of work, including its progression scope and challenges of technological development, then this program is built for you. If you're a senior leader or a C-suite executive, CEO, CFO, CTOs, and you're seeking to leverage disruptive technologies to create business value and gain an understanding of the potential in autonomous robots, blockchain technology, smart contracts, then this course is for you. And also, if you're a consultant and you're seeking to offer innovative solutions using emerging technologies to prepare client organizations for the future of business and technology, such as process optimization and decentralized finance, then this course was also built for you. So if any of that sounds like you, then you are absolutely in the right place. Now, if technology acceleration, if this program sounds right for you, why take it through Wharton Online? Why take it through the Wharton School? When first and foremost, the Wharton School is quite simply one of the finest business schools in the world. It also happens to be the oldest collegiate business school in the world as part of the famed Ivy League University of Pennsylvania. And the Wharton School is recognized globally for its intellectual leadership and ongoing innovation across every major discipline of business education. It boasts having one of the most published faculties of any business school, and now has a broad global community, including a powerful alumni network of nearly 100,000 graduates. Uh, and at any given time, uh, the Wharton School has 5,000 uh, undergrad MBA, executive MBA, and doctoral students, and more than 13,000 participants in its executive education programs annually. And that is how it has built this broad global community. But Wharton Online specifically, now having including this course, more than 50 online programs from which you can choose. Uh, the Wharton School is proud to say that more than 3 million learners from all over the world have accessed Wharton Online programming taught by Wharton's world-class faculty. And heading this incredible faculty uh, and running this incredible school is Dean Erica James, the Dean of the Wharton School, who just celebrated her two-year anniversary uh, as head of the Wharton School. I believe she started in July of 2020. And this quote right here not only perfectly captures what we're trying to accomplish at Wharton, but also what we're trying to accomplish with this course in particular. Today's environment means you can't afford to simply respond to or manage change. The best businesses must anticipate change and even intentionally create change. 
so as not to become complacent and at Wharton. We are excited to be the partner to help you get there. So if you want to better understand these disruptive technologies and you want to be able not just to anticipate changes coming from disruptive technologies, but maybe even intentionally create those changes, then this course is for you so that you are not simply responding or managing that change. And with that, it is my thrill and pleasure to hand things over to Amokar, who is going to be taking us through uh, the amazing program overview, taking us module by module, telling us about how he built this course, uh, tell you a little bit about our previous students, introduce you to the faculty, and then I'll be back in a little bit for the learning experience. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen and I'm going to hand things over to Amokar. Thank you, Mark. Thank you so much. Um, welcome everyone again. I am going to share my screen real quick just to go over a handful of slides, give you a little bit more context and detail on the program. All right, so the program overview. Um, we all know that there is obviously a lot of technology developments at the moment. You probably have heard um, a lot of talks about uh, blockchain and cryptocurrencies. NFTs, stable coins, central bank digital currencies, consortiums, DAOs. So starting with the back end of the program, that's one of the key industries that we'll be covering throughout um, the modules in this course. Similarly, we're also going to be discussing uh, other technologies that are uh, disrupting uh, industries across the board. Uh, one such technology is AI, the applications of machine learning, deep learning, and how do we go about, uh, let's say, predicting consumer behavior based on AI? Or as an example, anecdotally, how does Walmart uh, leverage AI to uh, manage the, the, the or, or rather understand the flow of traffic in their stores in order to decide when it's best to restock? Or how does Walmart, for example, uses AI to identify when bananas are most ripe and when they have to put them on the shelf or take them off the shelf, as an example. Um, lots of different applications of artificial technology in our daily lives, whether it's using Google Map, email, uh, Alexa, and, and, and other um, AI-powered type of bots. Uh, there is also a clear emphasis here on robotics and the applications of uh, cobots, um, collaborative with robots. And you'll, you'll see in the course that there is millions and millions of robots now that are coexisting with us. So what does that really mean in terms of the applications and the implications of having robots coexist with your workforce? One implication might be that you cannot have a single screw on your warehouses because otherwise your robots uh, would fail. And so the organizational design decisions that come from the adoption of robotics uh, are also uh, key. And so if you're looking at the slide that I'm uh, sharing here, um, you know, these industries are poised for uh, hyper growth, right? We're talking about uh, a $40 billion industry um, for the global market for blockchain by 2025, uh, $260 billion industry for the global market for AI by 2027, and then roughly 87 billion uh, as the global market for advanced robotics by 2025. All of these technologies follow as you'll see in the program, an S-curve. And so as they are um, you know, uh, developing over time, you have to figure out what is the right point to get into the technology given the maturity of the technology. And then as those technologies are phasing out, then you have to also figure out when to get out. Uh, clearly there's many implications of, of adopting these technologies, not the least of which is how do you go about hiring people, right? How do you go about presenting some of these concepts to the board? and getting funding inside of, uh, of your company in order to take your company to the next level and innovate. And so um, lots of very interesting uh, technological developments as we're going through the course as well. Our approach is not just theoretical. We're bringing, we're bringing use cases and case studies that are at the enterprise grade that are not necessarily five years ago, but very recent. Um, in fact, for example, in the blockchain examples, we go through the JP Morgan Onyx network which has some of the largest uh, banks in the world already on that blockchain. And so um, very interesting concepts. Uh, and again, the, the world-renowned faculty is one of the main uh, key differentiators for, for this program. So uh, one example is Dr. Kapoor, who happens to be um, a, 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 a professor at the Wharton School, um, originally uh, coming out of INSEAD with a PhD. His uh, research focuses on the management of industry disruption and ecosystems related to new technologies and business models. He is a widely published author. He is also an entrepreneur and, and an ex-executive at Texas Instruments. Um, 
love his content, love his delivery. I've had the great pleasure of also hosting and moderating two sessions already in the prior cohorts with Dr. Tambe. Dr. Tambe uh, specializes on the impact that these technologies are going to have on your decision-making process and frameworks to adopt these new technologies, but all obviously with an angle of thinking through the technological changes and reskilling and algorithms uh, uh, that HR and management can use uh, to predict how to best adopt new technologies. So when we're talking about data scientists, for example, you're talking about folks that have sci uh, statistics backgrounds, mathematical backgrounds, computer science backgrounds, um, in addition to other uh, skill sets. And so not only they're really hard to find, but if you are deciding to adopt uh, uh, AI into your organization, then that is a key consideration here. So Dr. Tambe also comes from uh, multiple degrees in engineering out of MIT and also a PhD in managerial economics out of the Wharton School. Um, Dr. Wu, one of my favorites, uh, she talks a lot about the robotics and the implications of robotics and the coexistence of robotics into your organization, in addition to understanding how you have to uh, cherry pick in what she calls a Swiss cheese model. Uh, cherry pick the best of both worlds, what's best from the humans versus the robots and having coexist, but clearly having an eye out for what the organizational impact looks like and the fact that if you don't redesign your organization, you probably would fail at adopting robotics. And so um, Dr. Wu also comes from um, three degrees from MIT, uh, including a PhD in management science. Um, again, you know, very much focused on AI and analytics and also on robotics. And then last but not least, uh, Mr. Kevin Warbach, uh, anecdotally, he was actually my uh, professor of legal studies and business ethics when I got my MBA at Wharton, uh, recently uh, held office hours with him and it was uh, quite a fantastic um, experience because he brought forward not only uh, the latest and greatest on blockchain, but also what are the ethical implications of mining and minting uh, new coins, right, in terms of the environment or um, you know, regulatory changes and so on. And so he's been with um, uh, Wharton for quite some time. Uh, he is a Harvard Law uh, graduate. And in addition to that, he's also served under the, under the Obama administration and has also participated as a consultant with the FCC. The claim of fame that I would say is very, very well renowned for Mr. Werbach is that he was also very much ingrained in the development of the internet. And so if you consider the internet as a transfer of information, now he's getting uh, deeply embedded into the transfer of value, AKA the blockchain. Okay, so this is my humble self. Um, I happen to be a FinTech blockchain and crypto instructor at Wharton Cornell at MIT. Um, in addition to most recently uh, starting out at Columbia University as well with a blockchain course there by way of my professional background, because ultimately I see um, these programs as my way of giving back and my way of researching uh, as I'm writing a book on some of the same topics. But I, I spent about 10 years on, on Wall Street at different firms like Goldman Sachs and BlackRock. I've been a full-time entrepreneur since 2012. Uh, I founded three companies, I uh, got one exit, raised 2.7 million for my own companies. I've helped other companies as a mentor and an advisor to raise north of 2.8 billion. Um, and as, as, as part of my work uh, in a different company, not necessarily FinTech School, I do advise startups and financial institutions, regulators, central banks and governments on topics related to the same agenda, innovation, right? How do you go about adopting uh, FinTech, blockchain, crypto? Um, I'm also an investor, so I do scout for family offices and syndicates in addition to being a venture partner at ConScience VC. I also scout for Ghana's Ventures, uh, which is a, a venture fund spoke, uh, specifically focused on uh, Latinx founders. And I've done a lot of trainings in the past through corporate uh, engagements with Moody's Analytics. Uh, as a matter of fact, as of yesterday, I was working with the Development Bank of Singapore in the last three days. Um, um, yeah, and today we're actually wrapping up. So on different topics relating to funding high growth startups uh, or introductions to FinTech, blockchain and so on. And I did start a school uh, in 2016 called FinTech School. Through that um, uh, startup, you know, which grew to about 10 million in, in, in six years, uh, we have had many, many engagements with universities, uh, professional associations, central banks and the likes. And so it's a great pleasure for me to be here, obviously, but what I am complimenting is the practical aspect of things. And I'm going to share with you during the office hours how we do that. 
So some of the key program takeaways, if I may share these, um, you know, at the end of the program, you're basically going to be able to evaluate the growth potential and the evolution of these disruptive technologies. You'll be able to compare successful versus unsuccessful implementations of these technologies in business ventures. Uh, you'll identify uh, current uh, machine learning, deep learning, and other types of AI applications, generative AI, for example, right now in NFTs, you're seeing uh, a lot of AI being utilized to come up with new NFTs and permutations of the same type of, of let's say, bored apes, right? Um, you'll also be able to examine how, you know, utilizing robots for automation will transform organizational operations. Remember what I said about the screw. Uh, in addition to understanding also how to identify potential applications of blockchain technology within different industries, whether you're coming from financial services, healthcare, um, logistics, I think pretty much everything at this point is uh, impacted by blockchain. You may not believe that, or you may not be aware of some of the case studies or the, uh, uh, the recent uh, applications, but I'll give you an example. The FDA is utilizing uh, blockchain to prevent counterfeited drugs. Boeing is utilizing blockchain to track and trace their air, uh, airplane parts. Uh, the IBM Food Trust is utilized by a lot of supermarkets like Kroger and Walmart in order to prevent food recalls or to actually track and trace uh, the origin of a spoilage, right? So lots of different um, ranging from different industries, whether it's AI, robotics, or blockchain, and adjacent technologies as well, such as the Internet of Things, will be discussed throughout the program. So quick overview on the modules. Module one is an introduction to disruptive technologies. It's about two weeks. Um, and here we're we're really focusing on enabling organizations to design and create innovations that produce real business value. So we're talking about assessing the value of technology ecosystems, applying different frameworks, uh, you know, whether it's technology pillars, how to embed technology, how to create ecosystems, uh, but ultimately how to explore organizations with disruptive technology embedded into the business model. And uh, some folks, are coming in with a lot of years of experience. Uh, the majority of you would probably have over 10 years of experience, uh, at least in the prior cohorts, that was the case, but it's cross-functional, cross-industry, in addition to a geographically diverse cohort. Um, so you'll be able to build a network that is quite strong, not only across the globe, but also across different industries. And so module two now, going deeper into different technologies uh, that focuses on artificial intelligence. So we will be talking about how current and potential applications of AI, ML, and uh, deep learning could be a game changer for our organization, right? We'll talk about case studies from Amazon. We're we'll talking about case studies from um, uh, companies in pharmaceutical industry, um, others that are leveraging AI to read text, um, implications of AI in financial services. There are, in fact, ETFs that are powered by AI now. So, uh, lots of interesting um, applications. Uh, another example would be in healthcare, you know, how AI could be leveraged to detect brain tumors at a rate that is much better than a doctor can, right? And that's the reality we're in at the moment. So we'll be exploring the advancement of these technologies and then uh, thinking through the pros and cons of the implications of AI to your organization. Not the least of which, as I said, is how do you go about hiring a new staff um, that can help you adopt these new technologies. The automation within robots is one week. This is, uh, as we know, autonomous robots, self-driving cars, robot soldiers are becoming a reality. There are ethical implications behind some of these topics and we'll be discussing those. One such implication might be whether or not a soldier, a robot soldier, an AI powered soldier should have the, the ability or the decision-making capability uh, of shooting someone, right? What happens with an autonomous self-driving uh, car? when they're in an intersection and they have to either kill the passengers or run over somebody who's jaywalking. So a lot of really interesting research, very interesting applications of, of robotics. And um, again, how do we go about coexisting uh, with robots or cobots, the benefits and the challenges of these robots. We'll also talk about case studies from Amazon and the Kiva robots um, and how that came about and how that disrupted the entire uh, industry as it relates to e-commerce. And then last but not least, there's a week on blockchain. I already mentioned some of the same topics, but you'll go from an acceleration uh, from zero to one, so to speak, as it relates to cryptocurrencies, smart contracts, 
uh, different types of governance on the blockchain, whether it's decentralized autonomous organizations, uh, and again, also some of the implications on payments, for example. You have a, a, a central banks like the US Fed uh, that are testing central bank digital currencies and have already uh, piloted 1.7 million transactions per second, which is roughly uh, 30 times what Visa processes per second globally. So as you can see in the world of payments, considering the onset of blockchain and crypto, uh, AKA in this case, stable coins or central bank digital currencies, uh, we will see a very different transfer value as we go forward. Okay, the high impact, if there's any questions, again, feel free to pop them into the, um, the chat and we'll be able to answer them. But the, um, the learning experience is uh, effectively uh, one where we're taking an action plan, we're creating a technology go-to-market strategy, we're using real life world examples from organizations, like I said, case studies of companies that have embedded these technologies into their business models will obviously explore failures and success stories. Uh, there is an, a reflective journal that you have um, where you are continuing to explore some of the same um, you know, applications and the implications of doing so. Uh, you will be preparing for automation, let's say with robots or preparing to adopt, uh, let's say blockchain or AI. Uh, from, from the smart contracts perspective, you can think about identification of NFTs and how that uh, impacts the transfer or rather impacts the, the proof of ownership for not just digital assets, but also any asset at this point, considering that you can tokenize just about anything. And then again, uh, last but not least, the gen next generation of AI, uh, examining the possibilities of generative AI and otherwise different uh, technologies, as we said. So um, I wanted to share with you also, given that I've been with this program since the beginning, um, some of the prior cohorts, this will be the third cohort, and I think we're getting uh, very good reviews, and if the program was not successful, we wouldn't be seeing the outcomes. What are some of the outcomes we're seeing? Well, uh, I wouldn't mention the name, but one such example is Nike adopting some of these technologies and, and some of the C-level suite actually joining part of the program, right? So there's other brands as well uh, that have come through and have leveraged the, the network and leveraged the, the know-how from this program to, to take their organizations to the next level. There are capstone projects, as for, of course, throughout um, the course. You know, there's assignments and discussions, but I'll leave that to Mark. Anyways, the main point here is that the networking component, not only are you becoming part of the Wharton Alumni Network, uh, but you're also uh, joining a well-diverse group of individuals from different countries. In this case, the very first cohort was primarily based out of the US and then about nine countries uh, ranging from China, Thailand, India, Canada, and others. In the next cohort, we saw a, a, an uptick on folks from the UK, from India, from Saudi Arabia, South Africa. Uh, and this also uh, grew to over 12 countries. And so the participant profiles from, um, from a, um, a geographical standpoint, again, quite diverse. The same story is true in terms of the top five industries. Uh, quite a few folks coming in from banking and financial services. Uh, as I mentioned, you know, my prior life was in that world. And so I happen to also have been a full-time fintech entrepreneur for the last decade. So I do bring uh, a little bit of uh, a special flavor, you could say, for this particular industry. IT and consulting, uh, another one of the major ones, healthcare, consumer goods also being heavily impacted by the same technologies, whether AI, logistics, and blockchain, and robotics, right? So the prior cohort, if I could share here, the prior cohort uh, also had a diverse set of backgrounds. And this is the most recent cohort where IT services is uh, basically tied with financial services, uh, greater um, um, presence from the education and higher ed market in addition to consumer goods and healthcare. So once again, not only is the program diverse in terms of the geographical exposure, but also the industry exposure. And then when we're looking at the participant profiles, right? So in the very first cohort, roughly 50% of the participants had less than four years of experience. And then as you see, the distribution is pretty wide, 6% with 25 plus years of experience, 17% with 20 plus years of experience. And so if you do the math here, Quickly, you're at about over 40% um, that have 44% uh, that have over 10 years of experience, right? So, very much a, a um, diverse crowd as well in terms of the 
the number of years of experience. The last cohort um, similarly had quite a representation across the board in terms of seniority. And the last thing I wanted to share with you is, yes, okay, you see the program modules. Clearly you can um, understand that from the website. Give me one second, I'm sorry. Okay, here we go. So um, on a weekly basis, we get together with all the participants. And one of the uh, elements that we have found is very fruitful uh, in terms of not just the knowledge, but also the application of this knowledge and taking it to the next level is the networking component. So we do have during the office hours, some networking sessions where folks get to break out into rooms, get to meet your fellow participants uh, and talk about different challenges you're facing in addition to just connecting dots. One of the key components of the program is the networking aspect. And we run that in the office hours where folks can break out into sessions and, and get to know each other, right? And, and exchange notes on uh, their innovation agendas, connect dots on different projects. I've seen companies get started on this. I've seen new divisions get started. Um, yeah, lots of connecting of dots. And then the, the last four bullets here, I wanted to highlight those because while it's really important to understand how to adopt these technologies, clearly you have to take it to the next level, which may be, uh, how do you go about building a minimum viable product? So we have sessions around building a minimum viable product. We talk about different companies like Airbnb and how Airbnb built their minimum viable product. Um, similarly, we also talk about how to pitch these ideas to your board. Or if you're an entrepreneur, how do you go about pitching these ideas to an investor? And that also takes inputs such as your business model canvas. So we'll talk about business modeling and financial modeling as well. So you can create the whole package and again, go from not just an idea, but now the implementation, subsequently monetization, and then the disruptive change follows from that. So I'm gonna hand it over to my colleague, Mark now, um, to talk about the program experience. Over to you, Mark. So with that, let me tell you a little bit more about your program experience. Now, Emilcar uh, is the best when it comes to knowing what exactly happens in these programs. So he's already touched on a few of these things, but just a few more things that I want to touch on before we move on. The very first thing that I wanna emphasize is in the top row, the second item, the bite-sized learning. Now, what that refers to is that there are a lot of different options out there for online learning, but we have made sure to make this course as accommodating for any schedule as possible. So we understand that everyone's schedules are very different. We have students from all over the world, and especially in this time of COVID that we just, um, that, you know, we're still in two, year two and a half of it, but, you know, many of us for the past two and a half years have been working from home while some of us had children who were learning from home. So we understand that everyone's schedules are very different. So we have broken down this program into three minute, five minute, seven minute pieces. So these on-demand video sessions, you can listen to a three minute or five minute or seven minute video. We don't give you a 45 minute long video that you have to sit through and then you have to find your place again or you you know you get interrupted so say you have a commute by train and it's 25 minutes each way to work you could get through five six seven eight videos on the way to work five six seven eight videos on the way home from work and so even what you might consider just a time that might not necessarily be productive like a commute can suddenly turn into part of your learning journey thanks to the bite-sized learning that we have with this program. Um, now, a couple of the things that Emilcar talked about were the real world examples, application-based learning, the on-demand video sessions I just talked about, the capstone project and the reflective journals, the reflective journals where you are actually gonna be reflecting on your own and where these journal entries are gonna be encouraging you to think for yourself, uh, what are the ethical ramifications of some of these new technologies? So the reflective journals is also a unique aspect of this program. Polls and discussions, what that means is polls and discussions, we don't just want you to be, when we refer to a cohort, we don't mean that you're coincidentally learning alongside other people from all over the world. We want you to feel like you are part of a classroom. So there are gonna be these opportunities for all of you to interact and compare notes and talk about what you've been learning. They're gonna be live office hours, uh, like Amilcar said, with the program leader, where you're all gonna be able to have discussions, but also these moderated discussion boards. Uh, that aren't reliant on a single time zone where you can all put your messages in there and compare notes and talk about um, your different experiences, bring all that industrial and geographic diversity into the classroom. Also, there are going to be live faculty lectures as well. So 
the program experience as a whole is you are going to feel supported and no matter what kind of adult learner you are, you are going to feel supported and empowered and encouraged in this program. The last thing I want to touch on, uh, some of you might have noticed knowledge checks and uh, your, you know, your uh, heart rate might have increased a little bit because you might say to yourself, oh, I don't like tests. I never like tests in school. I don't want to hear about knowledge checks. Well, I want you to think about those knowledge checks as another form of support because the point of this course is for you to be able to use this in your present and future careers immediately as soon as the course is over. And the only way that you can feel assured that you have retained all this knowledge, that you are, are truly in possession of all this information, and that you can apply it immediately to your present and future careers, is if we check in and say, okay, hey, this is what we went over this week. Or do you feel comfortable with this? And you say, yep. And then you feel assured you've had that knowledge check. So you know that it's in there. You know that it is with you and that you're going to be able to apply it to your present and future careers. So again, don't panic about the knowledge check. It is simply another form of support to assist any adult learner uh, in this incredible course. And on top of all that, upon successful completion of the program, you will earn a verified digital certificate of completion from the Wharton School. This is a fantastic tool for your resume. Um, you never know, you might find yourself in an interview and find yourself on the other side of the table or desk from someone else who has also taken a, a Wharton online program. And you will find that you have a common language, a common vernacular with that person. Uh, but also, it's a very powerful networking tool. Uh, our students, you can put this on your LinkedIn, you can put this on your social media, find um, members of previous cohorts, and also find members of future cohorts. You never know who after you might be taking this uh, course, and you'll be able to connect with them. And especially with something uh, as new as these disruptive technologies, uh, being part of that community uh, in, in and on social media is such a huge advantage. So the certificate is just another feather in your cap. It's a huge bonus on top of all the information and knowledge and skill and wisdom that you will gain with this program. So with that, program support is putting a link up in the chat box that you can click on to register for the next cohort of this course, Technology Acceleration Program, Make Disruptive Technology your advantage offered through the Wharton School. The next cohort is right around the corner. So click on that link to register for the next cohort or whichever date or whichever future cohort, whichever date works best for you. Uh, click on that link right now to register for this program. You can see there the program fee and six weeks online that works out to less than $400 a week. An incredible investment to be uh, gaining this kind of knowledge from so many faculty members at the Wharton School, one of the finest business schools in the world, an incredible investment in yourself, an incredible investment in your career. Uh, one thing I do want to emphasize as well, while you're clicking on that link, you see four to six hours per week there. That is the range that is not an average. So when you say four to six hours per week, it doesn't mean that some students spend two hours and some students spend 12 hours. That is not how it works. It's four to six hours per week, broken down into that bite-sized learning spread out throughout the week, however your schedule can accommodate it. So if you want to join the next cohort of this program, click on that link in the chat box. Even if you have another meeting right after this one and you don't have time to register for the next cohort right now, just go ahead and click on the link. Uh, if you're anything like me, your browser already has 50 tabs open. So go ahead, click on that link, make it the 51st tab open in your browser so that you can join the next cohort for Technology Acceleration Program. Join Amilcar, uh, join that amazing Wharton faculty uh, and really change your life and jumpstart your career. Just, um, I know we not, might not necessarily have data, but anecdotally, um, what have our students told you since you've been on the ground floor and you've really built this thing? Uh, you've been on the ground floor. What have our students given you for feedback as to what was a particularly unique or exciting aspect of this course? Certainly, yeah. One of the uh, key pieces of feedback, and we always run a survey. I think we, we uh, topped at about 4.8 out of five thereabouts. So the, the rankings have been pretty high. The feedback has been very good. Um, yeah, some of the key uh, uh, outcomes out of this, and, and I have to also highlight that some of the participants are also part of the CTO program at Wharton. And so they're coming in as a cohort in some cases already together. But yeah, one of the key uh, uh, takeaways has been the frameworks that are necessary to understand how do you go about evaluating these technologies and implementing them? And that is all uh, at the end, towards the end of the course, where you're putting together a capstone project, you have to select a technology and then um, really talk about how you're going to implement it 
at your firm. And so um, that it happens to be one of the, 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 the key takeaways is bringing theory into practice and, and actually driving uh, enterprise value, right? Um, from the applications of these technologies. So yeah. The other one I think would, would be the, the personal connections, right? Uh, folks uh, who might be trying to get something off the ground uh, during the networking sessions, we talk about, here's what I have, here's what I need. Here's what I'm, I got work, you know, going on in terms of current projects. And there's a lot of cross-pollination there, which, you know, even though I love the bite-sized learning and the 50, 55th tab, as you said, you know, you, you can't replace that human element and those connections that are made. So. Absolutely true. Absolutely true. And that's also the element that we've all been missing the past two and a half years is that even with online learning, we still want that human element. We still want that connection. And that's what makes this course so unique is that it does include that. It's not just, hey, give us your money and we'll send you a bunch of links on YouTube. Like this is a dynamic interactive program that you have built. I wanna talk a little bit more about that capstone project. Uh, so anticipating maybe some questions that our future students have, um, do they have to use their own firm for their capstone project or can they have an idea for AI and ML in a different firm? Yeah, I've actually seen both, right? I've seen folks that are, <clears throat> trying to, um, they, they would leverage their own company and, and, and select the technology and obviously implement it in their own firm. But I've also seen quite a few uh, participants with an entrepreneurial bend, right? Where they're picking a technology and they're thinking through a business plan. And yeah, how do, we, how do you go about implementing uh, and starting and launching a new startup? So a combination of things, so to speak, yeah. But um, you're definitely not bound by anything. You could also be unemployed and selecting a company that is that has successfully implemented some of these technologies uh, or again your own company or a pet project or your own startup yeah so wide range of possibilities and one question we often get we're never going to force anyone to use like proprietary information or something it's not like that's ever shared with the cohort we've gotten that question before but there's nothing like that that anyone needs to worry about right emilcar Absolutely, there's no issues with uh, intellectual property um, or, you know, sharing anything that that will compromise your position at your firm. Um, yeah, no issues there. And I imagine that's probably very useful, especially for consultants. Uh, we talked about in an earlier slide about uh, the different people that this is particularly suited for, but it's it's suited for people who probably need to be doing their homework and imagining how disruptive technologies could work at other firms. So that would actually be hugely beneficial for consultants to say, hey, that's a potential future customer. Here's how disruptive technology could help them. Correct. Yeah. It most definitely empowers you to have that gravitas that is required to convince a C the C-suite, right, to implement. And, and really the frameworks are essential to help guide that process, right? So uh, one of the most interesting frameworks I've seen in this in, in this program is the blockchain framework, where we have to talk about is blockchain really right for your company, right? Whether or not you need a database, whether or not you have multiple participants, whether or not you need to build trust and different rules, right? All of those are key uh, decisions uh, and questions that you have to answer before you say yes, blockchain is in fact suitable for my organization. Yeah. And it's also critical because with these new technologies, the people who are often, like you said, in that C-suite, they're not necessarily trained in any of these technologies. And I'm sure many of them have never even heard of these technologies. So, you know, some of our, our future leaders need that ability to be able to talk to the engineers who are actually on the ground floor building and like moving these, you know, moving and shaking these technologies. And then there are the executives who in some cases have never even heard of the technologies, little, let alone be able to talk about them. So this ability to speak to both worlds and speak both languages at the same time is so critical at this point in the economy. Indeed, yeah. Um, you know, taking that a, a step further, Mark, um, build versus buy decision sometimes, right? Whether or not you're going to be building something or just taking off a, a product off the shelf uh, in the case of AI, right? That's a, a key consideration that we talk about throughout the course and in office hours. Similarly, organic versus inorganic growth, right? Do you go about acquiring companies so you can take on those capabilities? So buying a startup that is really good in AI, so you don't go, you don't have to think about hiring a new team, right? So inorganic versus organic, very different types of um, execution approaches. And, and yeah, uh, you know, because of the collaborative nature of the, the sessions when we get together, 
there's always that cross pollination of, hey, I faced these issues before where uh, someone because of politics or someone without knowledge of the industry just said, no, we don't, we're not going to go there. And there was really no consider, concerted effort to, to have a scientific way of supporting the decision for yes or no, right? It was more of a political decision or, or one with uh, risk aversion, right? So a, a lot of really interesting um, anecdotes that are shared throughout. And I think that's part of the, the, the learning process here. So, yeah. I feel like the anecdote that I know the best is everyone, I feel like a lot of firms has that person who always needs the shiny new toy. And so they're like, oh, we need to be investing in blockchain. I need millions of dollars for blockchain. It's like, what are you using it for? I don't care. I heard it once and I need blockchain. You know, like so. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, yeah. <laughs> Just to put it on your annual report, we're on blockchain now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> agree. The, agree. Ability, <laughs> the ability to tell your boss yes and no, that's what's so critical. Sometimes they need to hear one or the other. Well, Amilcar, do you have any final thoughts that you want to leave our future students with before I let everybody go? No, I would say join the program. You know, this is a, um, a fantastic opportunity to learn disruptive technologies. Again, the frameworks of how to implement these technologies in your firm and clearly understanding ethical implications, uh, labor issues, labor economics, um, strategic decisions, right? It, 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 when you adopt one of these technologies, it really sends a ripple across your entire organization. And most of the C-suites that are joining the program um, do have to grapple with those decisions. And so it is a transformative um, uh, program in my opinion. And I mean, I'm, I'm psyched because I've been able to contribute to it and, and continue to see the growth of the program. We, we, we continue to have uh, very good participation and very good backgrounds that are joining. So uh, excited to see the next cohort, Mark. So yeah, very much looking forward to it. And I, I hope to see some of the attendees also as part of that program. Thank you so much, Amilcar. So friends, with that, uh, if you have any more questions or if any questions come up after the session is over, please send your questions at any time to wharton at emeritus.org. Again, that's wharton at emeritus.org. Program support is putting that link back up in the chat box for you to click on and register for the next cohort of this program. I want to thank Amilcar Chavaria so much for his time and his expertise and all the time that he's put into this program. Amilcar, thank you so much for being here today. No, thank you, Mark. Uh, wonderful uh, collaborating with you and Emeritus in general. Thanks so much. Thank you. And thank all of you for joining us today. Thank all of you, our future students, for joining us from all around the world. Thank you so much for your time and attention today. Again, if you have any future questions at any time, you can send them to warden at emeritus.org. Go ahead and click on that link to join us in the next cohort. And until we see you in the next cohort, have a beautiful day, everyone. Thank you so much for being here today. Bye-bye, everybody. Thank you.